try. Do you remember the old party game, Trade Up? It's where you give everyone something small like a nickel and you tell them to go through the neighborhood asking people to trade something bigger for it and continuing on. And when the time is up, all the kids return and the team with the biggest item wins. Well, a lady in San Francisco decided to try it in daily life. Demi Skipper started with a bobby pin two months ago. She made two self-imposed rules, no cash and no trading with friends. Along the way, she has traded items up for an iPhone and a Dodge Ram van. Not a bad return for a hairpin. Uh, Ms. Skipper says she sends out hundreds of messages before and after work each day, finding people who are willing to trade something bigger or more valuable with her. Hey, so, Governor, uh, yeah. did I tell you my friend who's a stock trader, he recently, uh, you know, got electrocuted? Ooh, how'd did that happen? Did I tell happen? you about that? Oh, man. Ah. He shorted Tesla, so it was... Oh, uh, that's, um, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even understand that. I still don't understand that. I didn't write that. It's an electric car, Keith. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I really admire this lady in this story because swapping and trading, yeah, it's a tricky business. It is. One time I was on a trip to Egypt and almost got hoodwinked by a street trader in Cairo. He pulled out this big skull and told me it was the skull of the great queen Cleopatra. And I could have it for just one hundred dollars. Hmm. But you know how I knew he was pulling a fast one? No, how? Well, when I said it was too expensive, he pulled out a small skull, and when I asked who it was, he told me it was the great Queen Cleopatra when she was a little girl. Oh, no. <laughs> I, think, I think we better get back yeah, to Ms. Skipper's maybe real could. trading story. All right, so her success has garnered millions of viewers on Instagram as they track her progress. Now, I gotta tell you, I love her ultimate goal. Skipper has sworn that she will not give up until she has traded up for a house. We're gonna keep you posted on her progress. Well, we all love summer, and one of the big reasons is delicious watermelons. Now, this story naturally is of great interest to me because I was born and raised in Hope, Arkansas, which is the watermelon capital of the world. Of course, the other reason is getting to chop them up on the head of a good friend, right? Well, that's the story for Mr. Ashrita Furman. Armed with a machete, Furman chopped through 50 watermelons perched on his friend's head in just 60 seconds to set a world record. Wow. Because there's a record for everything, and who knew there was one for this? I would tell you this, this guy is really one in a melon, don't you think? Ah. Uh. Well, Governor, again, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this reminded me of when my friend Byron went on a camping trip with his buddy Jim. Hmm. Now, keep this in mind. They were setting up tents when yeah. Jim suddenly collapsed. Byron jumped on his cell phone, called 911 in a panic. The dispatcher told Byron to calm down, first make sure that Jim was dead. Well, Ooh. all of a sudden, there's total silence on the phone, then a sound like an ax hitting a watermelon. Then my friend Byron got back on the phone and said, Okay, now what? Oh, Keith. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Somebody out there doesn't get that, and I hope they don't. Yeah, me too, really. Yeah. Well, I hope you still visit Byron occasionally in yeah. prison. Yeah. Um, I think a math joke may have been a better choice. Like, if Byron had 20 watermelons and Jim had none, but when Byron threw a watermelon at him, what would Jim have? Uh, a concussion, oh, Keith. That's oh, what he would have oh, had. Oh, yeah. Jim would have a concussion. concussion. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure why this guy is so obsessed with watermelon records, but I'm glad he and his friend are still safe and sound, because if he ever misses, I guess it would just be a slaughter melon record. Oh! Woo! <laughs> Travel a ways for that. Uh, yeah. All right, before we go, the folks at eatliver.com, which has got to be the weirdest named website I've ever heard, eatliver.com, has gathered some eye-popping, or should I say, shield your eyes men's clothing looks from the fashion runways like this one that says it's cold out but i'm still going to wear my pajamas with oversized gloves can you imagine that buying looks just that like outfit? trey crazy wow. isn't it is that you trey? it is trey yeah or what about this striped summer suit that includes some sort of cooking pot helmet uh i, I know every man's <laughs> wife would love to see him come home in that right here's one 
a weird nightmarish Santa's workshop security guard <laughs> getup. Keith. Uh, and if you're hungry, how about buying an outfit that makes you look like a giant Cheeto? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. I like that. Well, just like any of those male runway models at a Harley biker rally, we got to get out of here. But always remember that we read the news. So you don't have to. Wait, don't click that button. Well, unless it was the subscribe button, and then carry on. And while you're down there, hit that little notification bell too. Oh, and if you leave a like and a comment, I will personally give my dog Toby a treat. <laughs> leave a like, feed a dog, as I always say.